Hey guys, Miss Miklos here, and today um, we are talking about dealing with square roots and inequalities. And in this set of notes, we are only going to be talking about these as they apply to circles and parabolas because we've already learned those. But from here on out, I would expect to see this kind of stuff on our other comic sections as well. And I want to show you guys a picture of my cat Milo. He's the one that meows and like causes issues when I'm making videos. So, there you go. There's Milo. Now back to math. Okay, problem number one here. We have x squared plus y squared is greater than 16. Now, if this was just an equation, we could definitely see that this is a circle because we have both x squared and y squared. They're added together, and they have the same coefficient. The only thing that is different from our normal, normal circle equation is the fact that this is not an equation, it is an inequality. And you guys may remember, if we have greater than or less than, we have a dashed line. If we have greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, then we have a solid line. And we really did this all the way back in chapter two when we were learning how to graph. The other thing, whenever I have an inequality, I know I need to shade all my solutions. And something is a solution if it makes a true statement. So we're going to go back and we're actually going to graph this exactly how we normally would. We know the two characteristics we need to find are the center and the radius. Our center would be 0, 0 because I don't have anything in the parentheses with the x or with the y. My radius is the square root of 16, which would be 4. So I'm going to start at 0, 0, and I'm going to go out 4 in all directions. And I need to determine at this point, should my circle be solid or dashed? And since I have this inequality that is not equal to, I know that my circle is going to be dashed. So there we go. It's a lovely circle. Now I need to figure out where should I shade. And when we had a line, we really either shaded to the right of the line or to the left of the line. If I have a circle, my two options are either inside the circle or outside the circle. So my advice, when we were dealing with lines, we normally wanted to put in zero, zero. It made it really easy. My advice with a circle is plug in the center because whenever I substitute those values in for the center, it always gives me zero on the right side of my equation, which makes life nice. So zero squared plus zero squared is greater than 16. Is zero greater than 16? And obviously we know, no, it's not. So what that means is that our solutions in here are not solutions at all. Okay, I should say these points in here are not solutions. Everything outside the circle makes a true statement. So I'm going to go ahead and shade everything outside the circle, okay? And I think this is pretty evident where our solutions are going to be. Now, if I really wanted to make sure, I could choose one of these ordered pairs like 5, 0, substitute it in, and it will make a true statement. Okay, so major things. I'm graphing this identically to what we did previously in this chapter. The only difference I have to determine is it solid or dashed, and where am I shading? Okay, so looking at number two, um, once again, I think that this is a circle because we have x squared plus y squared. Um, it's addition. They both have the same coefficient. So I'm just going to make a little note that this is a circle. But what stands out to me this time is I have this extra y. So that means, yes, you guessed it. CTS completing the square, our best friend. So we do need to go ahead and complete the square here. So I'm going to go ahead. My x squared is fine. I'm going to subtract 8y over, and then it's less than or equal to 0. I know that I need to create a perfect square trinomial, so I'm going to take negative 8, divide it by 2, which is negative 4, and square it, which would be 16. So if I add 16 to one side, I know I have to add 16 to the other side as well. So I have x squared plus y minus 4 squared is less than or equal to 16. So my characteristics, I know that my center is going to be 0, 4, 
because we don't have anything in the parentheses with x, and the opposite of negative 4 is 4. My radius, once again, is 4, because the square root of 16 is 4. So I'm going to go 0, 4, and then I need to go out 4 in all directions. And this time I need to determine should my circle be solid or dashed. And since we have this equal to, I know that I can actually make a solid circle. Now I need to determine where am I going to shade. So I'm going to try 0, 4, and I'm actually going to substitute it into this correct form because I think it's going to make it easier. So I have 0 squared plus, I don't know why I wrote y, because instead of y, I'm putting 4 minus 4 squared is less than or equal to 16. Is 0 less than or equal to 16? And we know that the answer to that is definitely yes. So that means that I am shading inside our circle. There we go. So inequalities, the only differences we need to determine is it solid or dashed, and where are we going to shade? Square roots actually make us think a little bit. Okay, so with square roots, we have four different options. We're either going to have y equals and either a positive square root or a negative square root, or we're going to have x equals either a positive square root or a negative square root. So this is something that we need to memorize. However, we can kind of use some logic to help us out. When I see y, I think y-axis, which is up and down. Normally, a y that is positive tells me, well, that's a giant pen, that um, I'm going to be dealing with the top. Okay, so that means that I'm going to actually graph the top half. If y equals a negative square root, that means I am graphing the bottom half. If x, I know x-axis goes right and left, so if x equals a positive square root, I'm graphing to the right. If x equals a negative square root, I'm graphing to the left. Okay, so for me, I think often it's easier to actually just think about it than straight up memorize stuff, but regardless of how we learn, we need to know these four things. So if I look at number three, I wanna point out when we have a square root, it's very difficult for me to tell right away what type of conic section this is. So I'm going to wait until I isolate, or I should say until I get rid of my radical before I determine what it is. The one thing I noticed though, I have y equals a positive square root, which means I'm graphing the top half. And I'm making this really obvious to myself because sometimes it's easy to just blank out and go through the motions. Okay, make it obvious you're graphing the top half because that will affect what our overall answer looks like. So we need to kind of think back to things we know. And I know in order to isolate, or not isolate, I keep saying that tonight. In order to get rid of my square root, which is really what I want to do, I need to square both sides. So I get y squared equals, when I square the square root, they cancel out and I'm left with x plus 2. Now at this point, I can tell that this is a parabola. And the reason why I can see that is because only my y is squared. Remember, when we only have one variable that's squared, that is a parabola. I know we need to isolate my non-squared variable, which is x. So I get y squared. That was a really ugly y. Let me try that over again here y squared minus 2 equals x. I know I do not need to um, complete the square here because I don't have an extra y hanging out anywhere. So I'm going to figure out our characteristics. First thing, with my vertex, my y would be in the parentheses. So I, since I don't have anything, I know that my 0 is going to be my y value. And negative 2 is going to be our x value because that is our constant. Our a value here is a positive 1. So since it's an x equals, I know x goes right and left. So it's going to the right. It is normal because our a value is 1. And my line of symmetry is y equals 0. So I'm going to go to negative 2, 0. 
And we told ourselves at the very beginning of this problem that I'm only graphing the top half. So I'm just gonna go up one and over one and only draw the top half of my parabola. If I wanted to, I could draw the other half to be dashed, but I don't have to, okay? I would be completely fine if this is all I saw. And in fact, if we tried one of these ordered pairs into this and we put it into this equation, it would not work. Okay, for example, if I put in negative one, negative one, I would get negative one equals the square root of one, which is not true because there's no plus or minus out in front. So that tells me that these are extraneous solutions. They do not work. My only solutions are on the top portion. Number four, we have another square root problem. Um, this time I notice it is x equals a positive square root. So that tells me that I am graphing the right half. So right away let me rewrite this problem. x equals 3 plus the square root of y minus 4. Um, we know or at least we should know that whenever I'm getting rid of a square root, I need to isolate that first. So I'm gonna move this three over to the other side. So I have x minus three equals the square root of y minus four. Now I'm gonna go ahead and square both sides and you guys might be thinking, oh great, because I know when I square a binomial, we have to foil it. However, I want this to be in vertex form so I'm going to leave it in that squared mode. So I get this: the quantity x minus 3 squared equals y minus 4. When I isolate my non-squared variable, I get the quantity x minus 3 squared equals 4, I'm sorry, plus 4 equals y. So notice, I'm not going to foil this out unless I realize that my parabola is not in the correct form. And yes, I said this is a problem. The reason why is because only one variable squared. My y is not squared. Okay, so I'm writing parabola. And I need to come up with my four characteristics. My vertex this time is going to be 3, 4 because x is inside the parentheses, so I know the opposite of negative 3 is my x value. My constant is my y value. Since it's y equals and our a value is positive one, it's going up, it's also normal. My line of symmetry would be x equals three. So I'm going to go to three, four, and we said at the very beginning I'm only graphing the right side. So instead of going up one and over one in both directions, I'm just gonna go up one and to the right one. That's a hideous parabola, but there we go. Okay, the other half, Technically is dashed, but I don't even need to draw that. If I just show the right half, I'm good. So obviously on our test, we're definitely gonna have problems that deal with parabolas and circles that have inequalities and square roots in them. So um, with this assignment, we're only focusing on those two. But as you'll see in the, in the upcoming lectures, we will integrate those concepts into our actual lesson for the day.